Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jerome. So today I'm give a presentation on the study of shakedown analysis of free premium wheel steel subjected to multi axle cycle loading condition. So this project is an ongoing project. It's at the initial stage. And the project is contributed by myself, Darian Wellsby, and Peter Martin from the Institute of Railway Technology in Monash University, Australia. So presentation today will cover the introduction and the methodology applied in this project. Some results will be provided and followed by the discussion. The presentation will then be concluded with the summary and the future work of the project. <clears throat> so for uh, in an actual real wheel rolling contact process, the wheel is actually subjected to cycle loading, and the wheel surface is subjected to repeated rolling and sliding loading with high, S, uh, high contact stresses. For material subjected to cycle loading condition, basically the material response can be categorized into four different types, which include pure elastic, elastic shakedown, plastic shakedown, and ratcheting. So in the last century, a theoretical tool, uh, a theoretical tool known as shakedown map was developed to, uh, to predict the material response in a body which is subjected to which is subjected to rolling, psychic rolling contact conditions. So this shakedown map was developed based on the shakedown theorems, Hertzian contact theory, and also with the assumption of full slip conditions. One of the, uh, one of the advantage of using this shakedown map is that the maximum contact pressure can be estimated from the Hertzian contact theory. So low requirement of either experimental or numerical results is required. So due to this convenience, this method has been widely applied in the railway industry to predict the likelihood of damage on rail. However, there is still a drawback of using this shakedown map. Uh, the prediction of material response from the shakedown map is not directly related to any variations in material ductility and resting behavior of the material, <laughs> which has been found to play a, an important role on, uh, on initiating rolling contact for the damage on the rail. So for the rail subjected to real wheel psychic rolling contact, <clears throat> resting occurs when the stress level, uh, when, when the resulting stress level higher than the plastic shakedown limit. So this means that long zero lap plastic deformation will occur and accumulate in every single loading cycle. When the wedge tension exceeds the, the tilt limit of the real material, it will fail resulting in the initiation of real degradation, such as rolling contact fatigue cracks. So as shown in this, these three figures here for different wheel steel grade, there are the surface crack characteristic varies between different real steel grade. So this is due to the differences in chemical composition, in particular carbon content, different ductility, and also different resting behavior of the real material. So the resting behavior of the material is actually is strongly governed by the uh, by the psychic deformation characteristic. So generally, there are three different types of psychic deformation characteristic which include a cyclic hardening, cyclic stable, and cyclic softening. For a material with the cyclic hardening characteristic, uh, it, has the res uh, it has an increased resistance to plastic deformation. In contrast, for material sub uh, with the cyclic softening characteristic, it has the reduced resistance to plastic deformation. So the methodology I, uh, we, we applied in this project is the numerical method. So it is used to it is applied to estimate the uh, material response under different combination of normal and shear stress amplitude in the multi axial loading condition. At this stage, we consider the elliptical loading path, which is best which is considered to best represent the real wheel contact condition. So two different loading conditions for the elliptical loading path were considered. 
The first one is the asymmetric compressive loading with symmetric shear loading. The other one is the asymmetric tensile compressive loading with symmetric shear loading. So the second one is actually representing the presence of the res uh, residual stress in the real head. So the constitutive material model applied in this model to simulate the resting behavior of the material was developed in our previous study. So this constitutive material model can, satis can, can satisfactorily simulate and capture the, uh, both uliaxial and biaxial resting behavior of the of three periodic real steels. So this is done by coupling a cyclic softening rule into the isotropic hardening and kinematic hardening rules. Therefore, the effect of the loading history and the long proportional loading paths can be captured. So this model has, also, has already been validated in our previous study. So three premium rail steel, which are currently used in Australian heavy haul railway industry, are well considered in our study. So this includes a low alloy heat treated rail steel grade with carbon content of 0.8% and two harbor utetto rail steel grade with carbon content of 0.85% and 1%. So the material parameters for all these three rail steel were calibrated from the experimental results obtained from the monotonic tensile test Uli SL cycle loading test and by SL cycle loading tests. So to distinguish the material response obtained from the numerical analysis, uh, this criteria were applied, which in terms of the plastic strain, plastic strain weight, and also the energy, energy obtained in the stress strain curve. So here shows the results uh, for all three wheels still uh, under the loading condition one. The, for all the graphs here, the y-axis is the normal stress, normalized by the cyclic yield strength of the real material, while the x-axis is the uh, stress amplitude, normalized by the cyclic shear yield strength. Different color corresponds to different material response. The green one is the elastic response, blue one is the elastic shakedown response, Yellow and, uh, yellow and red one is the plastic shakedown and the resting response. So from the result, we can see that the normalized normal and shear stress levels for the resulting resting response varies between different real steels. So among all these three real steels, we can see that the HE2 real steel, which, has, which is a harpa utetto real steel grade, but with a relatively lower carbon content, has the highest shear and normal stress limit for resulting resting response. In contrast, the HE1 steel, which is also a Harpa Utetto wheel steel grade, but with a high, higher carbon content of 1%, has the lowest limit in shear. So here is the results for the loading condition 2. So loading condition 2 include the tensile stress. So when comparing the results between loading condition 1 and loading condition 2, the presence of the tensile stress significantly reduce the stress level for resulting resting, resting response. And this is more significant for the, F, uh, for the HE2 wheel steel. Among all the three wheel steel, we still find that the highest shear limit for resulting resting response is for the HE2 steel, while the HE1 steel still has the lowest shear limit for resulting resting response. So here is some of the discussion of the result we obtained it. So the SCO and shear stress amplitude correspond to the resulting SCO and shear stress level suffered by the real material. Under different real real rolling contact conditions, we are considered in our study. So what we find from our result is that the limiting stress, whatever normal or shear, for different types of material response under multi SCO cycle loading condition vary between different real steels. So for example, the HE1 steel, which, is, which has the higher carbon content, actually is find that to have the lower resistance to plastic flow and is more sensitive to psychic softening. So this results in a lower limiting stress for the resulting resting, be, uh, resting response. Also, uh, it used to be looked at, the previous shakedown map we used it is using a standard, car uh, is using a standard carbon wheel steel. 
the material we consider in this study is all three premium real steel. So both of, all of them have a finer pyrolytic microstructure and higher carbon content in, than those used to validate the shakedown theory. So our conclusion is that we should we require a better understanding of the precise mechanical meaning and implication of the shakedown limit for the premium wheel steel we are currently using in heavy whole wheel wheel operations. Also, from the practical point of view, so in heavy hull operation, the resulting stress level is always higher than the shakedown limit for the real material. So this means that ratcheting is always occurs. And so rolling contact fatigue is commonly found in the real steel. So we can, uh, it has been looked at, there is variation between the railway steels in practice in terms of both crack characteristic and also the crack initiation life. For different real steel, we may find the crack initiate in different periods, even though the check characteristic uh, and new tonnage are similar. So therefore, it is necessary for us to understand the performance of different real steels. So to do this, we need to take into consideration of the crack initiation life or damage prediction in the shakedown analysis. So the overall outcome of this project can then provide useful information for the selection of real steels and the development of effective prevent, uh, preventative grinding strategy for the real wheel operators. So to summarize my presentation, the, ma the material response of three premium real steels was remarkably simulated under different loading conditions. The response of all three real steels was strongly dependent on the relative of both normalized SL and shear stress levels. The limiting stress for different types of material response under multi SL cycle loading conditions vary between different real steels. Also, the presence of the residual stress reduces the limiting stress level for the resulting resting response. So, as I mentioned, that this project is an ongoing project. So, some of our future work includes to examine the correlation between different real real contact conditions and the resulting stress level on, on this premium real steel. Also, to investigate the correlations between different material parameters, in particular the ductility and initiation life for the improved morning contact fatigue prediction. So, here is the acknowledgement, and I would like to acknowledge the help from Southwest Southern University for the development of the material model during my PhD study. And this comes to the end of my presentation. Thank you.